are you here to invest and reap the fruits of your correct investment choice or to make losses due to your weak psychology? Let's first get a perspective from Howard Marks itself. And that is, of course, the great dilemma because investing is only about positioning your capital to profit from future developments. And yet, I always say we don't know what the future holds, more so today probably than at any other time in my life. I think the first thing you have to assume is that uh, life will go on. Uh, we will continue to have an economy. We will return. To so as the scientific investor always argues and tries to establish, positioning your portfolio with a great level of awareness about your risk tolerance in an asset with value, which you believe in, is something which you have to consider when you are looking at a long-term investment. Now, how long should I hold is another question which I regularly see in my comment section. And response in response to that, I would kind of show you guys, you know, something from Buffett's book of experience itself. So listen to this. One of Buffett's most famous quotes is that his favorite holding period is forever. I think he learned the value of long-term thinking, at least partially from Fisher, who once wrote, if the job has been correctly done when a common stock is purchased, the time to sell is almost never. I don't know if you understood that properly or not. I'm not saying you to hold till you die. But the idea here is to be a long-term holder and see the value. And when should you see the value? Because if you are a long-term holder, you would be seeing exponential growth. What are we looking at? This is the growth of Facebook users. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the growth in exponential term, you can see at first it goes slow, slow, slow. And when it reaches that particular rate of attention and adoption, it just goes exponential. Now, it's not only in one aspect of that, right? If the business model of your particular asset, in our case, it's XRP and Ripple, the company and their business model targeting the payments market, right? Is in a long term uptrend. Mm -hmm. But currently in a recessionary cycle, you know, for me, that asset should be viewed as an opportunity for long-term holders who can understand and see the value. That's, you know, based on my opinion. I don't know how you're going to digest this one, but looking at the business model and how the adoption and the fundamental side is changing for Ripple and XRP, I believe this is going to be huge. Welcome to the Scientific Investor channel, where we discuss crypto and science behind investing regularly. If you saw value in the content, do hit that like button. And if you are new here, please do hit that subscribe button and support the channel. If you would like to extend your support, you can use the Patreon and PayPal link given in the description below. Patreon will allow you to attain more value for your portfolio. Every portfolio will be looking different. Some will have commodities, some will have different asset classes. So digital assets, commodities, whatever you want to discuss, we have the time for that. You can just check on the Patreon link below. Now. Let us look into the change of the fundamental side itself. When we look at this particular news, it kind of shows us the fundamental side of the crypto sphere and the growth and adoption of XRP and Ripple. You know, their business model based on on-demand liquidity is getting attention. Excuse me, guys. Yeah, they are getting attention. And as they get that attention, what comes next? It is the exponential growth. Now, we are looking at accelerating growth in technology side. It also looks something like this. When you look at the car, telephone, light bulb, telegraph, and all other things, as we go to the top side, now we have distributed ledger technology, blockchain technology. So as we move to the upside, it's also going to be something similar. Now, yes, these are different aspects, just showing you how the fundamentals of one particular side leads to exponential growth. Now, in the same aspect, if you look at this one, BitPay and Coinbase launch an instant zero fee service for Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP. Now, why are they going zero fees? Because the competition in this particular arena is increasing and they understand that there is a lot more customers to join this particular party. And what happens when this lot more new customers comes in? You know, it's business as usual and profits for them and new liquidity in the market, right? So when we look at this particular news, Ripple's Ripple optimistic for greater on-demand liquidity 
and XRP adoption in Philippines. Now, we already know about the corridor towards Philippines. It's already live and how it is changing. We previously uh, saw from coins.ph, Senfriend, Azimo and all, how these are actually changing the entire Philippines market. Now, they do have competitors there, right? Like Western Union, if they have to compete with them, you know, kind of they are kind of providing you know, cheap and fast service. If they have to compete in that particular corridor, they at least have to drop their fees, something similar to that of MoneyGram or so, on to the partners of Ripple. Otherwise, they can't survive there. So when we read through this, what we can understand is, as the Philippines newspaper Manila Standard reports, F Ripple is prospecting further expansion opportunities in the Philippines for its XRP-based on-demand liquidity solution. Now, currently, you have coins PH, Senfriend, and Azimo there, who are already covering Philippine market. So according to that news article, what you can understand is you can send money around the world, reach there faster and with the lowest cost. Now, this particular product, which is the on-demand liquidity being mentioned all around the globe for the financial system itself to solve the liquidity trap in international payments. Now, that is not only for one corridor, which is Philippines, right? We are, if we are looking at Philippines corridor, it's not only for that. This is for the international payments. And in last video, we talked about Ripple, the company, looking their own demand liquidity corridor towards India. Now, that is kind of a huge area target market. In last update, we talked about Grayscale pointing towards the 2 trillion market target for XRP using on-demand liquidity. Now, if you read here, on-demand liquidity is using cryptocurrency XRP as a bridge, solving the 10 trillion USD problem. So the value of the target market is being priced in trillions and quadrillions when we talk about the back-end settlement as well. So what was the previous all-time high of the entire crypto market? It was way below $1 trillion, right? It was around $800 billion. So if you look at that, what you can understand is if XRP is to attain 20%, 30%, and you, know, you do the math based on that, you'll understand it's going to be in trillions. Now, when you consider the entire $100 billion market cap, you will reach a huge number. But look at the circulating supply. Mm -hmm. understand how much is in the escrow, how much is being released and then put back into the escrow. So the current circulating supply and the target price will be pushing the value of XRP higher. It's not all about the entire supply. When you're looking, majority of it is in escrow. So you have to actually consider that and understand that. Now this tweet from Astroic actually shows for Intelligent Protocol, which is ILP. Now, back in 2014, it was in the concept and 2030 is shown as the maturity target. Now, if you remember in between 2020 and 2030, for Ripple, the company, they have a market maturity target of 2025. That is for Ripple's clients, RippleNet and on-demand liquidity. And this is for Intelligent, meaning everyone will be using XRP in one way or the other as a bridge in Intelligent protocol that will be by the end of 2030. So being a long-term holder in this asset, you can't say, you know, you will not be able to say, no, 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 it's not going to a three digit. It's not going to four digit. We can't actually say that because we don't know how much money it will be bringing in once it acts as the standard of interoperability. We previously slow that, saw that, right? Chris Larson talking directly stating, Interledger protocol is soon becoming the standard of interoperability protocols. And we know that Swift delayed their interoperability stepping into ISO 2022. So automatically, they are late. And when they are late, again, one year, you know, the current target is 2021 November, and they are extending it one more year means 2022 November. That's too late. If you are looking at Ripple and their targets, that's too late. We are entering into the party soon or never because if you look at the charts, one thing is for sure, you had a weekly close above a long term resistance line, which is which can be considered from 0.26 to around 0.29. We just closed about that. We are about 0.3 now. Now that is a key area as we discussed in yesterday's video. Now that's on a weekly chart. If you zoom in and look at it on a three day chart, what you can see is what we just talked yesterday. Now, 
we went to the upside we broke above the 200 day moving average came back pulled back in a three candle reversal pattern and gave a bullish symbol here right now 200 day moving average is acting as a support and the rsi is on the overbought area now if you look at the same on a monthly chart what you can see in the macd is that the macd is kind of crossing to the upside and looking at the chart it looks really cool we had a bullish shaved candle which kind of erased the bearishness from this time right from this time here back in november 2019 we were moving to the downside and from that if you consider these two together as a mother candle say uh, if you take this as the mother candle movement of the bearish signal here now we just went even above that and we are now in that range but at the top of that range we can call that a resistance line if you put that uh, support resistance area considering this as a resistance and this area as uh, support if you extend that what you understand is we are nearing that support resistance zone because we also have the something similar at the bottom here too we went down we kind of supported in that area now we are reaching that support resistance area so if we manage to break about this on a monthly chart what you have to understand is history kind of rhymes itself and when we broke through that critical level it kind of breaks like this if you just measure the percentage of one month movement here previously what happened it was 293 percentage once and then after that it was again 171 percentage so who stayed there 400 percentage again so who stayed there would be getting from the bottom till the top a uh, whopping 4700 percentage then a consolidation for uh, six months seven months time now those who kept their holdings from this time till the top now you know we are all human beings we won't know where the top is say we understood that the monthly candle is closing here and we had to get out at this particular point say somewhere near here around 1.5 or two dollars and you had an average from here so not considering the top but considering the average here where you were able to get out still you would be having that whopping 40,000 in 40,000 percentage in profit now that's just on the technical side right now why I say that this time it would be even bigger than that in my opinion in last video we discussed about why Ripple the company is going to be even bigger than Amazon for cryptocurrency it should be the Amazon for the world's financial system that's what I believe in I presented all the details and facts in that video right if you want to understand that understand that because this is the time when you see Ripple is entering into advertising their own you know the marketing strategy is changing they are entering into this kind of advertisement now if you look at YouTube you can see that now if you look at Twitter you can see that so they are now pushing it aside right previously if you remember there was a conversation between uh, Ripple and Alex Cobb related to the Bank of America announcement and all now they are starting a campaign itself a marketing campaign in Twitter in YouTube in the social media platforms uh, means they are ready to announce something huge and they just want to get the attention from the mass now that's all good and positive right now this can actually be shown as a negative side by many who kind of don't understand how the market actually goes now yes the price fluctuation is based on the supply and demand and when someone sells huge it affects the price but here the case is like he's only allowed to sell one percentage of the daily volume so that's not going to entirely push the price down and majority of the time if you look at the chart what you can understand here is now go into a weekly or a monthly chart it depends upon how you analyze the market you can see long wicks right what does that long wicks means meaning the price actually went down or the sellers pushed the price till this particular point in this particular candle but they were not able to keep the price low because the buyers were there buyers came in bought that till this particular level now 0.15 is seen at that time 0.15 is seen as a support level whenever the price dips below that buyers are you know eager to buy that now from that time if you look at the chart you know this is chart is not you know something magical it is about understanding how investors treated this particular asset in terms of price when the price was moving to the downside how they interacted with this particular asset and when you look at this in a long term scenario you know for you know this is just common sense right you can understand that sellers kind of lost control here now 
if you take out this you understand it's a it was a long term resistance line we broke above and all but if you just take out those lines and just look at the 20 day moving average pointing towards the upside on a weekly chart and the rsi entering to the overbought area macd entering the positive territory it kind of shows you that it was previously whenever that happened together it was in a bull run it was entering into a bull run a new market cycle now if you want to believe that or not it's up to you now if you're looking just for patterns and trends to understand how this is going to evolve just to uh, see short term targets what you can do is say for example you can take a curve now this is what i personally see here if you look you may find something different but for me i kind of see like a head and shoulder forming either you can put it like this or like this still it gives you an idea of what i'm talking about what i'm seeing here is kind of a head and shoulder pattern in which this will be the bottom here now that's not accurate drawing i didn't actually prepare the drawing before so sorry for that now if you look at that that is kind of a head and shoulder pattern in which this would be the neckline and if we are breaking this particular point there what you can assume is the bottom of that wick towards that neckline which is 165 percentage so if you break from this particular level which is around 0.3 and 160 percentage it should be around 0.77 that would be taking you till this height which is the previous resistance line now yes majority of uh, you guys won't be agreeing with that head and shoulder pattern but common sense is if you look at the rounded bottom pattern here what you will understand is yes it is a rounded bottom and it is moving to the upside and most of the time what happens is these kind of rounded bottoms goes parabolic when it enters into a new market cycle if you want an idea about that you can come down and look here if you zoom in to see the market price volatility and the uh, rounded bottom here you can understand that it was having that rounded bottom but it just went parabolically to the upside there now it won't every time repeat itself instead it would rhyme itself that's what the experienced investors and technical analyst talks right so based on that we can look forward uh, you know a retracement is possible but if we are going to see a break near to that 200 day moving average 0.35 then yeah we may actually retrace a bit come back to 0.3 and then bounce to the upside now that's on the technical side now if you look at uh, the fundamental side binance saw the highest web traffic among other crypto exchanges in july that means more and more people are getting interested into the crypto assets or digital assets and they are entering the space that's new money coming in this particular tweet from xrp crypto wolf shows another side of fundamental letter showing you r3 coda and how it is being adopted universally right now when i say that you have to understand the scalability and resilience this provides for banking institution financial institutions is something special and that is the reason why they are getting more and more traction the entire financial market infrastructure is being changed we talked about that and they here highlights the sixth digital exchange they already offer xrp right so once this is going to get that final attention and that kickoff it's going to be huge because we already understand that banks in us is starting that adoption rate now why are we already now yeah i agree that some like crypto eri says say, don't focus on us i understand it's not only us it's the game of the world it's not just one country but the problem here is like say when us says no to something there are countries who kind of uh, tend to follow us if they say no to something the others will kind of you know okay we'll wait let's see what final decision come, comes out from united states and then they step back now when us goes on positive say look at south korea they went positive by that time they just announced that major banks would be allowing trading and custodying crypto so that's kind of something you know just my opinion it will vary from one individual to another as you talk now next one four reasons why we are in the early bull run stage now i kind of agree with this thing you know if you look at different aspects of uh, investing or uh, looking at the fundamental side you will understand that new money is coming in and the new interest and volume is rising now that's on a macro outlook for this particular asset class if you want to read through the article i'll actually put that in the description but clearly it shows how crypto is becoming you know the universal range at where the common mom and pop would be entering into this now i say this because i personally experienced in the last 
two, three days, I've been getting calls from many in India, many in United Arab Emirates, you know, Middle East, let it be in Europe. I'm getting calls being, uh, you know, asked in emails, how can I buy this asset? Now, yeah, they are asking about BTC and only a minority asked about XRP, but still they are now looking at digital assets. At least six to seven months before I was, you know, informing them, this is the time if you want to buy, you can buy and the market was kind of bottoming at that time, but no one was actually interested that time. But now it looks like it is going to bump. So guys, that's all for today. If you are a long-term holder, hold on to your asset, stay strong. I'll meet you guys on the next video. Bye for now.